Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have Chris Marlowe. She's a master direct response copywriter and award-winning marketer of 30 plus years. She's worked with small businesses all the way up to Fortune 100 companies. Some of those companies she's worked with include IBM, Nike, Reebok, Dell, and the list goes on and on. She is known as the queen of niche domination because she sees opportunities before others do and capitalizes using copywriting and direct response marketing, which she will talk about. Chris, thanks for joining me. Well, thank you, Jeremy. It's my pleasure. You know, Chris, since this Inspired Insider, my question is, uh, what's been your lowest moment? And then how did you push through those tough times? Yeah, I, 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 you know, I've had, as most people have, we've, you know, most of us have had financial struggles in their, in your life at one time or another. Um, those make for, I think, the most interesting stories. But in my case, um, I wound up with breast cancer at the height of mm. the coaching program. Oh, I had wow. a coach just working for me. Um, things were really humming along. I had employees. Um, and I was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, and that is a bad, bad breast cancer to have. And furthermore, it had gotten into the lymph nodes. Oh, so, so there was a long, hard year of, uh, of chemo, surgeries, many, many surgeries. I think I lost, I think I had seven surgeries. I'm not, I kind of really? not sure. Yeah, and uh, six months of, of constant chemo. And so um, it was a, a really rough year, and um, yeah, that's saying it lightly, I'm sure. Built my business up to a point where I realized that you know, thank God, because I just let it wind down and down and down and down and down during that whole time that I was fighting for my life. Yeah. Um, the good news is um, is that after they said they could not get rid of it, they did come to me and say, well, because after a double mastectomy, they said, uh, guess what? We couldn't find anything could not find anything. So when I walked away from that situation, I walked away with the certainty that is not in my body at all anymore. Wow. I don't think about it. I don't expect it to ever come back. The good news too also is that once you've had, tri triple negative is a weird one because once you've had it, you're not like um, other breast cancer survivors who wind up having to take medication forever or get checked up a lot. If you can get past that two years afterwards, it doesn't come back. They say it doesn't come back. I don't know if they can say it with that much certainty, but I don't care. I'm, I'm taking it. <laughs> so I'm I'm past that. I'm way past that. Um, and uh, that's, that's a tough tough time. Yeah, and I lived by myself, so I didn't really have a husband to lean on, and I had a lot of support. I had a lot of good friends and a lot of family that were with me every step of the way. Uh, even my coaching students. One of my coaching mm. students, Bill, actually put together a CD for me that is a hypnotherapy CD, the same one I was talking about earlier. Yeah. And um, and I listened to that. It was all about cleaning you out. She knows I like sailing, so we had a sailing thing going on. It was just, and I religiously, every day, I laid down and I went to the body work. So, you know, and keeping positive, um, yeah. I, I never felt that, um, I doctors scared me sometimes, but you know. What do you maybe, mean? Oh, telling you something bad. Uh -huh. <laughs> like you know things don't look good or whatever but you know you have to walk away from that and change your mind change your mind there was a book another one of the most significant books that i have ever had um is called um, um something about it's by murphy how to use your subconscious mind or something like that how to tap into your it was a strange thing my sister was uh, she's a realtor and she was late to a meeting because she was at the hospital with me getting the diagnosis mm. and the gal was annoyed she was a mortgage broker and she says I'm sorry but this is why I'm late well the gal walked across the street to a bookstore picked up this book um, how to how does something your your subconscious mind by Joseph Murphy and she mailed it to me in the mail Wow. And it arrived. And of all the books that I had to read, that book got me through this whole thing. Really? It is amazing, amazing book. So what's real funny about that is about um, two years later, when I was out of it and it was over, um, I opened up that book because I'll never, that's one book I'll never sell or get rid of. 
and I had her phone number and her name on the inside. So I called and I I didn't get through to her. I left a message and I said, this is the girl that da 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 da. And I just wanted to let you know that this book might have had a lot to do with the fact that it's gone and I'm okay. Mm. And I, I survived. But I wanted you to know that because I've never met you. And from the kindness of your heart, you went out there to help somebody that you never met and you may never meet again. Yeah. So I left that and she sent, called me back and left. She was crying. She left me a message. Yeah. That's I'm really, the, yeah. She was crying. She goes, I'm so, so, so glad you called. But, you know, I mean, that was a kindness that somebody did. Yeah. Somebody else they'd never even meet. It was a crazy um wonderful thing and sometimes <laughs> wonderful things do happen when you're in terrible places mm. so um, when you're learning about a little bit more about your fellow human uh, so that was one and then um, after that I got my coaching program back up and things got rolling again and then I got uh, my doctor poisoned me with um, too much thyroid med medication so that was another health um, issue that um, uh, was a problem because uh, I didn't work for four months. Really? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was wrong. <laughs> I said, all I could do was go to the doctors. Nobody could figure it out. Finally, they figured it out. Well, let me see. She raised your medication. Um, well, let me see. Was it over a year ago? And she's never followed you up. So, you know, you have to apparently, and I didn't know any better. I didn't know anything about thyroid medication. Uh, I had no idea. But yeah, so it's a, a you know, it was just negligence and it's, I call it a poisoning because that's what it is. Well, and so that was another real setback. And that puts it, you down, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I've been hit a couple ways from the medical side, but um, but nothing's going to get me. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's why your sister says you're strong, right? I keep moving forward and what else are you going to do anyway? Lay down? <laughs> Darn, you <laughs> cry? <Right. laughs> no got to go you got to keep moving no no chris i really appreciate you sharing that because that sounds like a really the toughest time you can go through you know when you're fighting for your life like that yeah well I, i'm certainly not the only one i'm sure yeah. you've got a lot of people in your lineup of people that yeah. have told you about the things that they've gone yeah. through right but every time you hear it it's the worst thing possible you know <laughs> yeah doesn't doesn't lighten the load at all um yeah. so on the on the upper part of things, tell me about the proudest moment, accomplishment. Well, you know, from a from a business standpoint, maybe um, I remember giving a presentation to a, a room of copywriters or three hundred copywriters, and I I knew it was going to be magical because the information that I was sharing was very proprietary and I had not let it out mm -hmm. and it just wasn't general knowledge at all. But um, when I was finished with the two hour presentation, I got a standing ovation and to me that was the most wonderful moment because I work for them and they, by standing up for me, they told me that they appreciated me. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, you can't buy that. Right. So, yeah, it was simple, but it's, it was a pretty emotional moment. I'd like to have more of those. <laughs> what was it in the presentation, you think? What was one or two things that really shocked well, so people? It had to do, it had to do with um, showing people how to find their way as new copywriters. How mm -hmm. to start, where to go, where, where, the, where the good stuff is, um, what the different niches look like how to analyze yourself against what's out there, how to plan ahead, figure out what, what it is that you want, you know, kind of work backwards and make some smart decisions by looking to the future and knowing where you want to go. Um, and then it was a step-by-step. -step. It was a two-hour deal. And my sell with that for them was that it took me five years to find my niche. My niche was never really found in five years. I just found, I found a job. And so my niche at that time was a job. <laughs> Uh, working at an agency, it wasn't after till I uh, left the agency that I managed to really ever get into what I consider to be a strong niche for me, and that was the software niche, um, because it had all the things that I liked and that I wanted. 
but uh, for them, there's a lot of places to go, but you need to know who you are first, and you need to know what's out there, and then you need to match yourself to it. And that's when you make a happy marriage, and you can have a lot of the successes that come with uh, being a copywriter. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it was a two-hour workshop. I told them I, it took me five years to find mine. I'm doing. I'm going to help you find yours in, in, in two hours. And then we stopped in every, you know, after every module, every section, they would do a little bit of work. And, um, you know, it came right out of the Marlon Marketing Method, actually. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was wonderful. I, I really was happy to to um, bring, bring that to them. I, I wished I could bring more. Um, I have a lot more to share, but sometimes, like I said, you know, you do have to keep some things proprietary. <laughs>